So yesterday the market rejoiced on a tone down, Jay Powell. Uh, but on second thought, you know, why was he so, you know, why wasn't he like as angry as he had been before uh, and more willing to talk about this sort of step down process? Remember that FOMC press conference. He was uh, he was a lot more angry. Nevertheless, Wall Street pretty happy talking now about maybe the next rate hike being 50 basis points, then only 25 and then one more 25. In fact, Wall Street still believes that we can get rate cuts at some point next year. I want to bring in from the Bonson Group, their managing director, David Bonson. And so Wall Street modeling, uh, you know, just uh, the sort of step down scenario, 50 and then 225 basis point uh, cuts. I think you also looking at some point next year for a pause too, right? I am, and I don't necessarily have a strong opinion about when they'll start cutting, but I do have a pretty strong conviction about the pause. And I actually think even the futures market you're referring to might be overdoing it. Uh, I would not be surprised at all if they end up doing 125 hike at the beginning of 23 and then stopping from there. Either way, the dot plots, the Fed zone prediction has been the worst prediction over the last <laughs> 5, 10, 20 years yeah. of what the Fed will do. And, and I think that'll be the case here as well. Yeah, I, I never even look at that anymore. Uh, and I think they want to get rid of it. But Powell did intimate that that they may not pause in the past. Right. He's talked about, hey, I don't want to be Arthur Burns. I want to be Paul Volcker. And that's what scares me. That he's acknowledging the lag effect, but they continue to pound away because he's sort of drawn a line in the sand. Are you worried about that at all? Well, I don't like the fact that he says it, and I don't believe that we should be doing monetary policy by historical comparison with events that are themselves totally not comparable. Um, the Fed helped create the inflation and housing, but the Fed had nothing to do with Chinese supply chain issues breaking down. Anyone looking at the inflation data can see that much of it is coming down, and it has nothing to do with trying to put millions of people out of work. So the problem is an economic principle that is wrong, Phillips curve, that there's a trade-off on employment and inflation. It's been wrong since the 70s and it's wrong now. Economic growth is not inflationary. You know, it's interesting because I thought they were moving away from the Phillips curve for a while there. Let me ask you about the market itself uh, because you've been focused on these dividend ideas. They've done extremely well. Everyone's piling in. But if the Fed steps away, will that make uh, equities uh, or, you know, riskier ideas more appealing? You know, it's a great question, and I do suspect that you could end up seeing the market start to believe that sentiment would improve. And so it wouldn't so much be that sentiment's improving, but people are betting on sentiment improving, front-running what they think might happen in growth. But no, Charles, I really believe these are generally decade-long stories, that a rotation from growth to value and value to growth is not a one- or two-year deal, and that fundamentally people will not be coming back in to 100 times revenue companies and, and to 50 and 70 times earnings companies. They're going to want reasonable valuations. Then you can make some money. That happened after dot-com. The great companies that performed well out of the NASDAQ implosion, they first had to do what? Rebuild free cash flow. Mm. Right now, you not only have a valuation deterioration in the expensive parts of the market, but you have a fundamental deterioration, which is why you see job layoffs and all the other things going on in Silicon Valley. So, so back to the fundamentals and, and, and still avoid the hype. <laughs> David, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it. All right, folks, uh, we'll be right back.